First person melee combat is pretty straightforward. I'll demonstrate a simple approach similar to games like Valorant and Counter Strike. I'll go over simple ray casting, animations, hit detection, a character controller, and the handy decal effect which conforms to any surface using the new visual effect shader graph. All the code and the project is free to download through the GitHub link down in the description, with all 3D models and animations included. They're all made by me, so feel free to use them with no copyright or credit required. So let's jump right into it. First off, my scene setup is pretty straightforward. There's a simple floor for plane and a scaled box, which will act as surfaces I can hit and move around on. I've applied a new layer named Hittable to each of these objects. I've also set up a basic crosshair, which is just an image centered to the screen on an overlay canvas. Create a game object and add a character controller and an audio source component. Then create a new script and play a controller. I'm using the new input system package, which if you haven't already downloaded, go to the package manager. Search up input and bear it will be to download and install. I'm not going to focus too much on the character controller in this video, as it's mainly about melee combat. I'll leave a great tutorial by Natty Creations, which my controller system is based on. When setting up the new input system, we'll create a movement action which takes a vector2 value and WASD to keybinds, which have a composite type of 2D vector, a jump button action, and a look action which takes in a vector2 value and is controlled by the delta of a mouse. Finally, the last keybind to add is for the attack, which is, has an action type of button and has a press and release interaction set for it. Going back to our script, include the Unity Engine.input system namespace and include the following variables which will control the player. I'm just going to breeze over the controller functions. We have an awake method which gets all the components needed, assigns inputs and locks the cursor. The update method checks if the player is grounded. The fixed update method will call physics updates to the player's move input method, which is as shows. And the late update which will call the look input method, which rotates the player and the camera. Make sure to enable and disable the input. And the last being a simple job method, which we will assign in our assign inputs method. In this method, the term a new input, which listens for the start of the attack button and calls a new method named attack. Before we make this method though, we'll set the variables for the behavior. We have the distance of the attack from the player outwards, the delay of when the attack should hit, which is handy if we have a long animation, the attack speed, damage, and the layer which we allow to hit. Also with a bit of optional polish with a prefab for the hit of visual effects, sounds for the hit and swing, as well as some checks if you are attacking, ready to attack, and amount of attacks you have performed. We'll start off with the method with a check if you aren't already attacking, and if you have already attacked. Although, if you are then ready, and aren't attacking, ready to attack and attacking checks will be set to false and true accordingly. Then we'll invoke new methods reset attack, with a delay of attack speed, and attack raycast with the delay of attack delay, which will hold the actual damage in behavior. I'll play the swing sound now and slightly variate the pitch, which sounds a lot better than hearing a single sound repeating itself over and over again. Quickly go back to our update and I've set up a temporary is press check to call our attack method, which enables us to hold down our mouse and keep on attacking. In our reset attack method, we're just resetting our checks, attacking and ready to attack. Next, we'll create our attack raycast, which sends out a raycast forward from the camera's position within the attack distance checking for any hittable layers we have defined. The if statement will then check if we have hit something. If we have, then we can call the hit target method and include a reference to the point at which the raycast hit. This method will then play our hit sound and instantiate our visual effects. By the way, all hit sounds were made by myself, but just playing around with different household objects and my own voice is how they were made. It's not an audio sound effects tutorial, so I won't be going into any more detail, maybe in another video if anyone's interested, but they're all free to use. We'll go back and finish off our player before we create our animations and visual effects. Follow the hierarchy of my player controller, where the main character is parented to the player prefab, and the arms or view model is parented to the camera. This will make sure they follow around the camera nicely. Open up the armature of the arms and create our sword which is connected to the rig accordingly. If you don't want to use my arm models, that's fine, just leave the weapon prefab parented to the camera instead. Going back to our arm model, that's where our animator controller will be placed. So create a new controller and simply enough, create new animation states named attack one, attack two, idle and warp. The states do not need to be connected, and make sure you have used the same spelling as I have. In each state, change the motion of each and assign the appropriate animation. We'll quickly set up a new animation behavior back in our player controller script. This system, which I've learned from an amazing tutorial from Tyro Dev, makes animations really smooth without any fancy animating skills. So check out the video in the description if you are interested, 
and goes into a lot more detail than I do. Make sure to set the variables which handles the animations carefully, spelling them correctly, and keeping capitalization constant. Basically, it just sets the animation based on the strings we've set and cross fades them if they are new animation states. The set animations will then set the player's idle and walk animations based on the player's velocity and if the player is attacking. Finally, make sure to call this method in our update. Now we can go back to our attack method and set our new animation states, which will variate the attack depending on the attack count, a bit like a combo system. To polish, we'll create our new decal visual effect. Make sure to install visual effect shader graph in your package manager, then right click in your project to create a new visual effect graph under the visual effects menu. I've created two effects within the same graph. One will be for the particles and another for the decal. Firstly, for the particles, set a count of 20 and project them from arc sphere with a random small lifetime between 0.1 and 0.2. In update, we'll then conform the particles to the shape of the sphere. This can all be tweaked, but I like to use soft particles which will fade nicely when intersecting objects. Then adjust the scale and reduce the size and alpha over lifetime. The decal is a lot more simple, just set a count of 1, a large lifetime of around 20, and the random angle of rotation to the z-axis to variate the decals. Now you need to replace the output particle quad and replace it with an output particle forward decal, and adjust the setting. I've created a quick slash particle in Photoshop, again I won't go into too much detail, but if you want to use your own, just change it up in the main texture here. Now that's everything, we just need to assign our variables in our controller and we can test it out. You can copy the same as me or adjust it to your liking. Just make sure to set an appropriate attack layer and set anything that you want to keep with the same tag. Now that it is working, we can make a simple enemy system. We'll just create a capsule with a new script named actor. This script will hold its current health, max health, take damage and death function. Basically we'll call the take damage method when hit, subtracting their health, checking if the player is lower than zero, thus destroying the object. Back in our player controller, we can attempt to get this actor component from our hit objects. If so, we can then call the take damage function in it. And the system is now finished. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please subscribe and like the video. I'll be posting new tutorials soon. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.